everyone and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noah McFoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. That was Asaf Adonai on piano. Asaf, what song was that? That is a Jewish Hebrew song called Hava Nagila. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've heard about that. You did a story about that, right? Who was the guy that created that song? Oh, uh, let's see if I can remember. Um, I can't, I'm brain dead at the moment, but that's anyway, okay. that's a Jewish song. Great, it's a great song. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Well, it's a, it's a new month. It uh, is. New hair, new, new shoes. Oh, new, new Scott. New whole bunch of other things going on there, but <laughs> same old attitude. Uh, <laughs> but of course, a lot happened over the weekend. Uh, uh, Sentinel played against uh, uh, Kalispell's Glacier Wolf Pack. Yes, it was their it homecoming. Was, uh, it was a very intense game, and we have those guys on to talk a little bit more about that and Great. more on wait. Wake Up Sports with uh, Kimson and Cole. Yep. So later we'll on. Here later, later on today. <laughs> um, but of course, uh, Homecoming Parade, the UM Homecoming Parade was happening this weekend. Nice. And I do have a nice little clip from the Homecoming Parade. And of course, you can see it all on MCAT television on, um, on YouTube. So be sure to, sure to subscribe. So of course, here it is. Oh yes, you can see the whole entire homecoming parade anytime on YouTube. And of course, it'll be airing all the time on MCAT forever. That looks awesome. <laughs> that looks great. I was just saying that I love the marching band. The marching band is like one of my favorites just yes. because the energy they put out and the marching band leader is always really, really fun. And oh, awesome. yeah. Oh, yeah. It loves yelling and like gets the crowd all riled up. Oh yeah. And then the horns and the music and the drums. I just love it. Marching band has always been my favorite in the parade. And it rained. It, it was did. like we set up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even that early. It was like seven, eight o'clock and Not it downpoured like crazy. And the, one of the reasons why I got new shoes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I put my hand up. There's no <laughs> <laughs> but new shoes, new shoes, because sh 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 I only get like new shoes every like oh, two years. years, or if the shoe like really bothers me, yeah. and the shoe really bothered me because there was a hole in it, so mm -hmm. I stepped in the puddle and I was my socks were wet all day. Oh like, no! <laughs> and I dealt with it. That sounds seriously. There's nothing worse than wet socks. Wet socks are miserable. Yeah, okay, cool. there are worse things than wet socks. But when you have wet socks, it's just like your whole day is just like bye. Yeah, and your guys' <laughs> days might be ruined. But of course, if you're stuck inside all day, this whole work week, you might be lucky because you have that 90% chance of rain happening today and pretty much continue on throughout the week. It'll probably trickle down just like rain. Um, your, uh, you, uh, your high is gonna be 53, yeah. your low is gonna be 39, and of course, it's gonna pretty much stay that way all week. Um, wow, yeah. it's just gonna be all falls sorts of upon rain. us. And it's gonna rain. Mm -hmm. and, and in the mountains, the the, they, um, I heard someone, um, one of my friends posted that uh, they, they're expecting 16 to 18 inches oh, of yeah. snow up in the mountains. Yep, I totally believe that. I think it's happening. If it rains down here or snows up there, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the natural order of things. Yeah. It is, but I've got a couple of trending stories for you guys to kick off our show. Well, we're already kicked off for our show. Okay, so if you guys did not hear over the weekend, this man survived a grizzly bear attack and actually like had enough composure to drive himself to the hospital call a bunch of people ahead of time and record it so this guy was hiking down in southwest montana he's from bozeman it was in the early in the morning and he was walking along and you know he kept calling out using bears not yeah. using bear spray but like called out to make sure that he was other bears were aware that he was coming around um and he <laughs> came across a mother and her cubs and the mother saw him and charged him yeah. um and attacked him so here's one photo of the bear attack wow. and then he was able to escape her and get down the mountain and as he's walking along she sees him again and he oh, gets attacked twice? for a second time a second time yeah so we should probably be pretty sure warn the audience that some of these pictures oh yeah might be they're graphic sorry you guys <laughs> some of these photos are graphic but when i'm talking about a bear attack you can only imagine oh, they're gonna be graphic. oh this one's really bad so this next one is really graphic uh, 
Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Yeah. It's so intense. this guy survived a double bear attack and had enough composure to call his wow. girlfriend, call 911, ask someone to call other people for him, drive himself to the hospital. Well, it, it, like, I can understand why you drive yourself to hospital because you know how much a life flight costs if you get flown from oh, a yeah. location? $70,000. Yeah. Yep. yep. And he also didn't have cell phone service and he was three miles away from his truck. I'm sure. You no, know, like, yeah. like, judging by. Uh, he even documented himself. He mm. filmed himself. He filmed himself. So yep. you guys can check that out online as well. Yeah, if you guys go into Facebook, I got my news source. It is from um, KQ. Q2. KTVQ. KTVQ. I believe that they're out of Bozeman. So that's where I got my information from. You guys can check that out. But they've got a video of him and they've got all those photos and they had the full. Um, transcript of what he said online about it. So you guys can read that full story in detail. <laughs> yeah. So just like Montana men are just tougher than rocks. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> or they just don't want to be pay for the ambulance. Or all that stuff. <laughs> so I'm glad that guy survived, and that's quite a tale. And you guys can check that all out online. But my next uh, trending item is that this man won the Nobel Peace Prize. Is Japanese Japan's Yoshinori Osumi won the 2016 Nobel Peace Prize for medicine for groundbreaking experience experiments with yeast, which expose a key mechanism in the body's defenses where cells degrade and recycle their components. Wow. Yeah, so he understood, so he's understanding the science behind the process called autophagy, or self-eating. Um, and then, so it's pretty much led to better understanding of diseases such as cancer, Parkinson's, and type 2 diabetes. Yeah, so like through his, all of his scientific research, um, they can now better understand all these different diseases that really attack our own cells and maybe find ways to cure them. Yeah, I mean, I mean like scientists, like, like everyone, like the whole stigma against germs was like so bad. It's like yeah. you have to have the, the clean items to kill all the germs, but mm -hmm. people started to realize like, you know, there's probably good germs out there helping us. There so are. that's definitely um, a good way of thinking of it, uh -huh. for sure. Very true. And then my last item is that, um, you know, we all know Kim Kardashian. She's a household name for whatever talent she does not have. But I thought this was kind of interesting that uh, she was in Paris with her family for uh, Paris Fashion Week. And she got held up. She got tied up and held at gunpoint and robbed. <laughs> and I'm sorry that I'm laughing. I think it's kind of bad. But, you know, being held up at gunpoint is a serious thing. Yeah. It's not funny. But Kim Kardashian, if anyone were to deserve it, it'd really be her. Oh, wow. I don't know. She's just, I don't know. So she got held up and robbed. And they stole, let's see, they stole, I think they stole like five to six Five to six million dollars worth of jewels and a ring about four million dollar four million euros, which is around like the same four million dollars. Yeah. So she was badly shaken but physically unharmed, and she's alive and well. And they just stole all of her stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that's about it. That's what I've got trending. I got both of those last two stories from Reuters, and then my first one is a Montana story. So you guys can all check that out online, and I'm sure you've all already heard about it already. Yeah, and of course, if you want to find more information about our morning show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to meet her out twice. Please, please check out our awesome MCAT podcast featuring some of our kids, Jack and Mason, which are just awesome mm -hmm. and also um you can like us on our facebook page follow us on twitter at wake up missoula mcat also has a twitter you can follow us at mcat tv missoula you can like us on facebook and to find out more information you can just go to mcat.org and today is the last day for the dune 72 competition so if you guys are want to do it in like like seven eight hours you can film a movie edit it and turn it into the uh to us, mm -hmm. and you can um, top prize is five hundred dollars, second prize three hundred dollars, third prize is one hundred dollars. It's a great um, thing for anybody who wants to, uh, you know, win some money and show off their uh, filmmaking and editing skills. And all they got to do is turn in by five o'clock today at MCAT, or they can email us a link by five o'clock, and it works just the same way. So you don't even have to be come in to turn in. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So I write nice. in with N because it, it totally makes sense. Wow, that was yeah. great. Yeah. But uh, so one more news everyone. item. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, some of the um, roads that uh. are closed. So Orange Street, um, you don't have to show this, but it's just Orange Street to um, at I-90. They're still working on that. Um, yeah. Um, Noel told you last week that they're kind of like moving up on certain sections. They're just yeah. prepping before yeah. they actually have to actually close it because they're going to put a roundabout in the um, I-90 Orange Street entranceway. Yep. Um, Brook Street, uh, the intersection of old Highway 93 to Pizza Hut, because Pizza <laughs> Hut uh, is a landmark. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> is going to do They've a been working on that forever. Installation. Yeah, they're going to keep forever. on doing that. Um, 
Heal V Way, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically stop and just talk about Heal V Way just a little bit. Uh, Heal V Way, um, they're, the city of Missoula will, uh, is constructing this roadway to improve it because they've, the, it's basically, if you ever been up Hill V Way, it's like the continuation of Russell. So if you hit mm -hmm. Russell and you hit, once you hit Higgins, southwest Higgins, when it, you know, the Higgins when it curves, and then you go uphill, that's Hill V Way. It's so steep that a lot of people have been sliding into oh. um, intersection traffic, or uh. basically having to like, like mm -hmm. go, like turn the wheel and like go into the ditch yep. a bunch of times. Yep. So this is the improvement that they're doing and they have a map. Oh, awesome. So Good. Uh, here is the map and this is what they're doing. This is section three, which is the main part uh, just to prevent any kind of slippage. Section two, which is another long stretch and section one. And as you can see, there's a lot of open farmland in this general area. And a lot of landowners were, like, were complaining that they don't want to pay for this, um, this road as well. Um, that was a huge, um, Issue um, when and they're so actually where, talking about it. Where is the original road? This is all the road. There's so that's the original road. And so, what are they doing for improvements? Oh, they're basically um, building it up. Oh, okay. In a way, building it up so it's it's less of a drop off, oh. and more of a, a higher degree angle. Great. And it's, it costs a lot more than a regular street because it's curved. Yes. Most streets, if it's just a straightaway, it's just the basic mm -hmm. stuff. But it's actually three to four times more expensive to have this particular road constructed. Wow. And a lot of people in the area are paying for it because it's yeah. a um, special improvement Their district. Road, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things that's going on with that. Well, it and is annoying And then, of course, the north now. side. Another thing with the north side mm -hmm. is that the north side has their urban um, renewal district. Mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, our Missoula is working with that to increase the infrastructure. And they're thinking they're, they're, it's a business improvement district. So they're trying to do that. So um, put it... And the, the reason why they're doing a business improvement district, so they're trying to tax more businesses than residents. So they're mm. trying to make it easier on the residents who live up in the north side. So that's pretty much it. That's the, kind of like the main kind of parts, and of course that overpass that they're building for the uh, um, the trails and all that stuff. So that's basically what's happening here in Missoula. Just a lot of construction. It is construction season, and they're going to hopefully finish Hillview Way by November. And it's very annoying right now, and all those people are frustrated and having to pay it. I'm sure it's frustrating. But when it becomes the middle of winter and they can go drive down that road all smooth and don't have to worry about running off or running into other people, they'll be very fortunate for cool. it. So are we yeah. ready to uh, talk about what's new on MCAT tonight? Yeah, let's all right now. So new on MCAT, uh, we have the Fringe Festival. So Fringe Festival is going to be basically new every single week. And if you guys don't know what the Zootown Fringe is, it's basically a collection of artists who come down to Missoula to kind of show off their skills and their arts and just, uh, you know, just kind of, um, we usually try to get people from all sorts of um, places around the country. And there were a lot of volunteers from Canada that came down to Missoula that really helped um, put Zootown Fringe on the map. So um, we have that. And of course, we have uh, another program that's our ongoing series, which is the Circles of Support for uh, people who are dealing with, um, I think it was like mental illness and depression and all that cool. stuff. So nice. that'll be on tonight starting at 7 p.m. And here's your little tease. And when we come back, we'll have events with Noel. Give it all. Oh, we don't want nothing. So give it all. You don't give nothing. So you've got to stand up tall. Because your time is coming. And you'll only learn from the fall. See, if you've learned one thing, you've got to want it all. Or you don't want nothing. Nothing. Thank you guys, D. Ryan. Thank you for welcoming me to Missoula. Appreciate it. something that looks like that that steering committee that meets once I would say in the early stages of the development of a project about once a month easily once a month and more as needed to come together and say how is it going what do you need where where are the gaps what are we missing um, what are our concerns and just to support the people that are trying to put the uh, put the project together uh, an advisory panel same thing uh, to provide advice uh, to the uh, to the to the organizers Hi, you guys. We're back, and we've got com some community events for Monday and Tuesday. Um, so first, as always, we've got things happening on Monday. And we're starting at noon to give you guys some time to watch our show and maybe take another nap. Uh. <laughs> and then you can go over to the Learning Center at Red Willow for some yoga. It starts at noon, noon to 1. Um, it's $40 for four weeks or just $12 to drop in. And it's just going to be, uh, I think, your vinyasa, standard vinyasa yoga. So that starts at noon. One o'clock is more WordPress. That's going to be at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. So it's pretty much expanding your knowledge of words, 
WordPress, which is an online blog spot where you can just you know blog, put up number, put up pictures, and anything that you want to. Um, yeah, so let's teach you how to use that. It's going to be from October third to October seventeenth, one to four p.m. Um, it'll be one hundred and twenty-eight dollars. We've got a couple bridge groups. We have a bridge group at the Missoula Senior Center at one o'clock. This is a beginner's brush up group. And then we have gardens, we have duplicate bridge over at the Garden City Duplicate Bridge Club. That's also at one o'clock. And if you guys wanna find out more information about them or go check them out, you can just go to missoulabridge.org and log on there and see where they practice and where they play and uh, any more information about them. We've got a couple presidential lecture series and seminars. So we've got a presidential lecture series seminar. It starts at 3 o'clock. This is going to be at the University of Montana in the Gallagher Business Building in room 123. And so it's with Alfred McCoy, who's a Harrington professor of history at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He's, he's speaking on showdown in the South China Sea, uh, Beijing and Washington, the struggle for dominion over the world island. So it's free and open to the public. We have a computer electronics in the makerspace at the public library at three o'clock. Um, then at four at uh, the base in the warehouse mall is wordplay. So that's, uh, it's like poetic games, it's word games, it's expansion, all the, you know, expanding your vocabulary, yeah. And then at the Missoula Public Library, Computer Fundamentals, that's at 6 o'clock. Um, so this is learning the various components of a computer, including managing your desktop and how to open programs. So if you literally do not know how to use a computer at all, this would be the class for you. Uh, you can call 721-2665 to register. Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is a beginning quilting class. It starts at 6 p.m. You can learn the art of quilting. It's starting from the finding the right sewing machine to finding all the patterns and fabrics that you can want. Um, so it's going to be every Monday from the October 3rd to October 24th from 6 to 9. It's going to be $89. And uh, if you need additional supplies, it'll be between $40 to $50. But I'm pretty sure I would think that they'll have provide things for you. You just have to pay a little bit extra. At the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they have Photoshop for Beginners. It starts at 6 p.m. That's going to be from the 3rd until November 11th. No, November 7th. Uh, from 6 to 8, it's going to be $90. And then uh, they make they have a private pilot ground training class. It starts at six o'clock at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. It's gonna be Mondays and Wednesdays from ten um, until from the third until the twenty third of November. It'll be from six to nine, and it's only four hundred thirty three dollars. I'm just kidding. I thought it said forty three dollars, and I was like, that's not right. And then I looked again. I was like, oh, that's right, four hundred thirty three dollars. Yeah. <laughs> At the University of Montana, they've got a UM Physical Therapy Massage Clinic fundraiser. So that starts at six o'clock. It's going to be ongoing um, for a little while. It goes from October third through October twenty seventh through all month long. Massages are twelve dollars for twenty minutes and twenty dollars for forty minutes. You can call two four three. 4753 to make an appointment. But if you just type in UM Physical Therapy Massage um, into Google, I'm sure that you'll it'll come up with a phone number and you can make your own appointment. Uh, located at uh, the corner of McLeod and Higgins, they have got a meditation class. It starts at 6 o'clock. I think that it was one, I had the address, but I, it appears it has lost me. Um, so they're exploring the art of Buddhism, guided meditation, and group discussion every Monday from 6 to 7. And then they also have a Tuesday morning 8 to 8.50 group meditation. At the Learning Center at Red Willow, they've got a Story as Medicine class. It starts at 6 p.m. It's October 3rd through October 14th, so it's uh, seven weeks. It's going to be $145 from 6 to 7.30. And so it's a seven-week course that will use the stories of our lives as fodder for introspection, creativity, and a pure medicine to provide multifaceted paths that brings together intention, breadth, self-encouragement, and observation of. Pretty cool. Lifelong Learning Center, they're going to be designing a perennial garden that starts at 6.30. That's a class. It goes from the 3rd until the 10th. So it's just going to be two Mondays from 6 to 8.30, and it's going to be only $33. Pretty good. At the University of Montana, they've got their University uh, Journalism School annual Polner Lecture that starts at 7 o'clock. Melissa McCoy, from who used to be the Deputy Managing Editor of the Los Angeles Times, is going to be here. She will be teaching a class at the, junior, at the Journalism School as well as giving lectures throughout the semester. Um, and so her topic will be what the media communicates about mental illness. It's free and open to the public at 7 p.m. in the University Center in their theater.
We've got a jazz dance class for adults at the Downtown Dance Collective at 7.30. This is the beginning intermediate jazz class. They ask that you either bring jazz shoes or bare feet. And then we have a President Lecture Series Lecture. So this is in the University of Montana in UC Ballroom. It starts at 8 o'clock. It'll be Alfred McCoy, and he'll be speaking on the surveillance and future of U.S. global power. Uh, lecture is free and open to the public. Yeah, and uh, the President Lecture Series is a great program that MCAT airs on our channel, and our very own Ron Scholl shoots all of them. Yes, he does. So you guys can look forward to seeing those if you guys can't actually make it, and I believe that Ron Scholl also does some live streaming of, his, of it as well. So oh, nice. You can also watch it on MCAT.org via our live stream, Local Live. Great, yeah, and then also if you don't catch it, it'll be later on in our channel about a month. Yeah. Things about a month out. Yeah, but that's what's going on in your community for your Monday. Uh, we're switching gears now. We've got Asaph with musical notes. Okay, I was writing the last note here. Okay, now as you know, last Friday I did a story on Walter Matthau, who played the original Oscar Madison in the movie version of The Odd Couple that started the series. So on today's musical notes, our guest, we're going to do the history and the various versions, Broadway, television, and movies, known to the world as The Odd Couple. And uh, this first picture here, this is Walter Matthau in the 1965 Broadway version with the actor Art Carney. Now, those who may recognize him, Art Carney played Ed Norton on The Honeymooners. This photograph here, this Broadway play opened in 1965 at the Plymouth Theater in New York, and this is what started the whole thing. Now let's go to the next picture. Now, of course, we all recognize this. After A year later, after the Broadway version, this version came out in 1968, and uh, I'm sorry, 1967, and of course, we have Jack Klugman on the left and Tony Randall on the right, and uh, this is the most familiar version of The Odd Couple. And this ran for five seasons, this particular series here. And it, uh, it aired on ABC from 1970 to 1975. Now let's go to the next one. Now this version here in 1982, this is the African-American version of The Odd Couple, and the actor on the left, his name is Ron Glass. He's best known for playing the detective on Barney Miller. And the actor on the phone, that's Damon Wilson. He's best known for playing Lamont Sanford on Sanford and Son. This one ran about less than a year, this particular version. And this came out during a time with the struggles in the African-American world in Hollywood, but this is one of the breakthroughs and Gary Marshall is responsible for this version of the odd couple the the man that created happy days in Laverne and Shirley he also did the Tony Randall version now Neil Simon wrote the odd couple but it was Gary Marshall who did the television versions now let's go to the next picture and then also this is the female version Neil Simon after seeing Gary Marshall do the television versions he did the Broadway versions. This version here is the female odd couple and the actress on the left, that's Sally Struthers. She was uh, best known for playing Gloria on All in the Family. And the actress on the right, that's Rita Moreno. She is a famous movie star of the past. And she's also on Rockford Files with uh, was James. Was she the one in West Side Story? Yeah, that was her. Yep, that okay. was her. <laughs> now let's go to the next one. This is the cartoon version. This came out in 1975. The dog, his name is Fleabag, and the cat is Spiffy. <laughs> now let's go to the next picture. Finally, in 2015, they have a, this is the latest version of The Odd Couple. The actor on the left, his name is Thomas Lennon. And of course, we recognize the one on the right that's Matthew Perry from Friends. Oh, yeah. So this is kind of the whole history. And of course, there are other versions around the world that I wouldn't have time to mention of the odd couple, the yeah. Japanese versions and the other Broadways and so on. But these, 
these ones that I presented are probably the most familiar of the Odd Couple franchise, so your audience can look it up. Now, on that note, I will stop. I uh, had no idea that they had more than one version. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Had they had like, no idea. A lot of, I mean, like, uh, I had some um, Japanese friends back when I was in college, yeah. and they said that a lot of their comedy is based on uh, a funny guy and a straight guy. Uh huh. It's, it's a lot of, that's what they do a lot of the stand up. A funny it's like guy, two and, then like, and then a guy that just, like, the, yeah, it's, all, it's yeah. very standard. Like, you have a two person comedy, you have the straight guy, and then the, the comic relief. Uh -huh. And they had, they had the same thing with Abbott and Costello, uh -huh. and the Marx Brothers did it, um, Monty Python always did it. They always have one person who's just like, I'm normal, and the other person's like, I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, but as far as the odd couple, they have them, they have them like all around the world, so these are the most familiar to us, that's and that's cool. why I chose I had no those. idea, well, I've never seen the original odd couple. Like, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it, but now I'm going to watch it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's definitely an interesting perspective because one is clean and one is dirty. How are yeah, these guys going to get along? It's the same with all of those, including the cartoon version, the African American version, the lady version. They're all the same. Nope. That's so funny. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Isa. <laughs> well, I'll have to definitely check them out now. And I, we encourage you guys to check them out as well. But and I, I, I honestly think, okay, just like Go another ahead. side note, yeah. a, a, a good female's odd couple would be uh, Broad City. Yes. On, on Comedy Central, that is like mm -hmm. the perfect example of, of the odd couple. They're and, hilarious. In modern times. Those and girls really are really successful. Yeah. They started on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brad City started on YouTube. I know. That's what I want to do. <laughs> I to start my <laughs> outrageousness on YouTube. Because this is a morning show and I'm PG for a morning show. <laughs> you should meet me in real life. And dissolve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I've got more events for us. Um, this is what's happening tomorrow. We're starting off at 8 a.m. on the corner of McLeod and Higgins. So 102 McLeod, and they are doing their meditation. So that starts at 8 a.m. It's a group meditation and Mila, Anna, there's a teaching that I can't pronounce, um, and a discussion to start the day from 8 to 8.50 every Tuesday morning. We have Animal Cube at the Children's Museum of Missoula. It starts at 11. So they have a cube, they can roll it out, and then when you roll it out, the children you know, get to act out what animal comes up. That sounds fun. So it's 11 to 11.30. And we have Shoot the Bull Toastmasters in the Alps Boardroom that starts at noon. It's a lively Toastmasters club where they improve their public speaking skills, they improve their leadership, and grow their vocabulary. The Alps Boardroom is located in the Florence Building. They've got leather crafting in the makerspace at the public library at noon. You can learn the art of leather crafting from noon until 12. It looks like you do have to register though, so go to tinyurl.com slash leather crafting or just call 721-2665. That's the library's number. You can call them, find out what you need to do to register um, as the website is here, but I didn't catch that and it's hard to say and not show. It's long, convoluted it's long. Yeah. title. So just call the library. Yeah. Uh, they also have open hours in their makerspace from 3 to 6. You can work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment. The Art Museum has an after-school art adventure at 345. So um, this has been an ongoing thing. So it's for those uh, teenagers after school. They're working on a variety of 2D and 3D projects. Um, and yeah. We have Fall from the Parks. There's going to be Fall at Silver Park that starts at 5 o'clock. And then at the Rocky Mountain School of Photography, they have Photography Basics that also starts at, that starts at six. And so it's a six session course which covers topics including how to use f-stops, shutter speeds, and ISO to achieve proper exposure, the basics of composition, photo equipment, including cameras, lenses, and tripods, as well as techniques for creating better photos. So you will need a digital SLR camera for the class as well as a way to edit and view your image. The event spans multiple days, but if you guys want to get involved and go to that, you can give them a call at 406-543-0171 and you can sign up for that. That school is going as long as uh, MCAT has, it seems like. Oh, I think that school has been around for a while. Yeah, a couple years. At the Top Hat Lounge, they've got a picking circle. It starts at 6 o'clock. This is for those bluegrass-oriented musicians to go in the raised seating booth and jam out in front of the sound booth. And then we have traditional Irish music with the Crashers and Friends at Imagination Brewing Company at 6, some more traditional music. And then there's Writers Anonymous at the Public Library, also 6 o'clock. This is a writing group. Um, it's going to be from 6 to 8 in the boardroom. And then we have another crew, uh, creative writing workshop in the Makerspace, and that's going to be from 6 to 
And then five, five Valleys Midwives Collective if, is Mama to Be Yoga. It starts at six o'clock. So this is yoga specifically designed for pregnant women because I know that it's a lot different than any other kinds of yoga and you have to be uh, different with your body with it. Yeah, so it's $11 to drop in. It's from six to 7.30 through September, months of September, October, November, and December. Um, and that's at six o'clock. Located at 615 Oak Street, number 101. At the Zootown Arts Community Center, they've got a collaborative parade prop building. It starts at 6 o'clock, so it's going to be October 4th, 11th, 18th, and 25th. From 6 to 8, it's free. And so they're creating large paper mache heads in the likenesses of some of the heroes we lost this year. David Bowie, Muhammad Ali, Ali and the artist formerly known as Prince. Um, so you can go down there and you can help with this collaborative project. I'm sure that they're going to be making this for the Day of the Dead parade, which is at the end of October, very beginning of November. Um, and so that'll be from 6 to 8 the next whole month. Good Food Store has a, a hands on knife skills class. So it's at 6.30. It's $35 if you bring your own knife, but $70, $70 and that includes a 6 inch chef's knife. Um, yeah, so that includes a knife. So if you bring your own, it's $35. If you don't have a knife, it's $70. System check is at the public library at 6.30. And then Dweezil Zappa is playing at the Wilma Theater at yeah, 7. Yeah. Are you going to go to that, Scott? <laughs> yes, I am. Cool. Yeah, I have heard some controversy with Dweezil Zappa. His, um, you know, he's playing his dad's music, and his other siblings do not like that. Yeah, nothing worse than a family squabble. Yeah, so he's been dealing with copyright issues over his own father's music. So he's had to completely change his tour's name and everything. But he'll still be here, and it should be a very good show. And we'll hear all about that from Scott on Wednesday. We have an African dance class at the Senior Center at 7 o'clock. It's only $10 for class or $35 for four classes. Ula is at the Bar Movement Studio at 7. Um, and I don't know how much that is. I think it's only like $4. It's pretty cheap. And then at 7 o'clock, this is put on by Maria Zupan. It is Business Writing Basics. Um, and so it's Tuesdays from the 4th until the 18th of uh, October. From 7 to 9, it's only $47. And it doesn't exactly say where it is, but it's I'm pretty sure it's through the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. So if you just go to their website or type that in online, you'll find the link. And then my last event for Tuesday and for today's show is square dancing. That's going to be at the Top Hat Lounge at 8 o'clock. It's free. They call out the moves. You just find a partner and swing yourself around. So as always, check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, the Independent, and the Missoulian for more community events. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of uh, traditional music. Yeah. And I want to live long enough, maybe like 50 years from now, where I can be like, um, oh yes, the traditional Justin Bieber music. Ah, yeah. <laughs> or, or, oh, Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. From the old country. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll just be listening into disbelief that they're still listening to that. I can't believe you're listening to that. I used to listen to this. I used to listen. I, I knew her personally. I knew her personally. Her I knew her when she was the capital of Montana. Yeah. It was like literally Montana will be Hannah Montana yeah. in the future. It's so ridiculous. Anyways, um, we have uh, our sports segment coming up. Oh, and, yes, we do. But here's an art clip. Uh, I, I suggest you guys go check this out. Check this out. This is happening at the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. And it's talking about the history of the Merc using photos and illustrations. Ah.
Time for sports on Missoula Community Access Television. I'm Cole Johnson. Kevin Cross. The Sentinel Spartans dropped a heartbreaker to the Glacier High Wolf Pack last Friday night in overtime, losing 63 to 62. It was a tough game, um, but Sentinel really competed against a team that came in that was undefeated at the time, going 5-0, and and now they're 6-0 on the year, Glacier High. Uh, to run through the stats real quick, uh, Drew Turner, 237 yards rushing in that game, two touchdowns. Um, Tayden Gilman, 17 out of 25, 240 pass yards. He had five total TDs. Uh, Jackson Pepe had four catches for 82 yards. He had three touchdowns. He also had a kickoff return for a touchdown and a pick six in the touchdown for a touchdown. Uh, Scout Will cut three catches for 74 yards. He had the um, game winner in overtime. Two touchdowns to his credit. Mitch Roberts had 169 yards rushing in two touchdown um, rushes, and he also threw for 19 of 28 for 286 yards and one TD. Nick Germer, uh, seven catches, 204 yards, two touchdowns for him. And Connor Crawford had three um, touchdowns from uh, one yard out as Sentinel drops the game 63 to 62 in overtime. Um, this game was so back and forth for a little while. Actually, there's a point in time where Sentinel was down by three touchdowns in the first half. Uh, they had the lead in overtime. Um, so Caden Messer missed an extra point, and then Glacier got a touchdown and kicked the extra point and won the game. It was a historic game in Missoula, Montana. Um, looking at both these teams now, um, Glacier is 6-0. and Sentinel is back to 500. Uh, where do you see Kemps and these teams stand right now um, moving forward? Like you said, it was an instant classic, and it was a shame somebody had to lose. I said that going into overtime. Um, Sentinel comes up one point short. But they're seven points short of being five and one, and that would put them among the top three or four teams in the state. Um, I think that they have the talent to, to be there, um, especially in a, in, a, in a year that seems to have a little bit more parity than other years. Um, but uh, they just haven't quite made the one or two plays that they had to make to, to get to that 5-1 and one record. That being said, I think they're in a great place, even though they are just 3-3. Three and three. I think that they um, are totally capable of making the playoffs when it's all said and done. Um, even though they are 3-3, uh, three and three, they have lost two of their losses. All three of their losses have been to playoff teams. One of them has been to Billing Senior who's the class of the conference, and that's the only game that wasn't really close. The rest of them have all been pretty close, uh, except the Helena game, where at Helena, they were able to take control of that game and um, turn it into kind of a route. And um, that was huge in building, again, like Dan Oliver talked about and we talked about on Friday, the mental toughness of this team. This team just grew through the experience of playing one of the best teams in the state in Glacier. And coming out, they had time and time again just clawing their way back into this game and um, at least getting it to a tie. And then they took their first lead of the game in overtime. And um, so that gives you a little bit of a glimpse of the, of the character of this team to be down or tied all night long and just keep on and keep on coming back. Um, so that's why I think they're going to be fine going forward. Glacier is 6-0 and now, and even though they play Flathead, which is technically a road game, that's in Kalispell. So all four of their games down the stretch in October are going to be at home, basically. So they have a great opportunity to go 10-0 and and uh, be one of those teams um, that at the end is one of the favorites to make it to the state title game, along with Billy Senior. Um, and there's a couple other teams, which we'll discuss in a second, um, that look really good as well. Yeah, Glacier High, things are looking good. I mean, you get the next four games at home, like you mentioned, opportunity to go undefeated. Looking at the standings real quick, Billings Senior may never lose again the rest of the year as well, so those two teams might be um, undefeated at the very end. Billings West is 5-1. and one. <clears throat> Bozeman is 5-1. and one. Helen is 4-2. and two. Missoula Big Sky is 3-3 three and three, along with Missoula Sentinel. Remember, Missoula Big Sky beat Missoula Sentinel, so they'll get any tiebreaker there. And then there's a couple teams. Actually, there's four teams of 2-4, and four, Great Falls, Butte, Helena Capital, and then Kalispell Flathead, which uh, Missoula Sentinel will play at home. Um, for one of their last home games of the year. Um, so you look at the standings now, um, October football, we kind of turned the page on September. Um, you look at the Spartans, three and three, like you mentioned, they've played in a lot of close games. They're definitely making some jumps maturity wise. How do you see them um, looking for October and perhaps into November? We're over halfway through the season now, so you should know who you are by now. 
um, and you rattle off some of the standings there, and um, one of the eight play playoff teams, I believe, um, when it's all said and done, is going to be the Missoula Sentinel Sparkles. Even though they're sitting at three and three right now, I think they they have one game where they might lose. Um, I think that the other games are completely winnable at Great Falls, Flathead at home, as you mentioned. Hellgate is a forfeit win they already get. So that puts them with three wins and six wins total. Uh, Billings West is going to be really, really tough because West has, has demonstrated that they're a very good football team. And so to go on the road and, and beat a very good football team is very, very hard. Um, so I think that's more of a coin flip, and I would give a slight advantage to Billings West there for sure. Um, with the long road trip of six hours to Billings. But um, yeah, I think that Sentinel is, is capable. They've demonstrated that so far this season that they're capable of, of getting the wins that they need to get into the playoffs when it's all said and done. So I expect them to not only play pretty well in November and well enough to, but, but well enough to get to November. Uh, for the first time in a few years. And, um, you know, Mitch Roberts, Elias DeWaters, Connor Crawford, Caden Messer is one reason why they, they will. Uh, Nick Germer um, on the offensive side. Uh, the defensive side has, has their fair share as well. Um, Matt Messerly, um, Brandon Morley. Uh, I could just keep rattling off names. But, uh, yeah, Sentinel is, is capable, and I expect them to, to be uh, a playoff team. Spartans lose 63-62 to at Washington Grizzly Stadium last Friday night. Um, they will be at Great Falls this Friday night. For Cole Johnson, I'm Captain Cross. You are listening to listening and watching Wake Up Missoula on Missoula Community Access Television. At Missoula Aging Services, you'll always be greeted with a warm welcome. Whether you are caring for an aging loved one or you're an older adult yourself, our friendly staff is ready to connect you to the help you need. You will always get unbiased advice, a free assessment of your needs, and personalized information about the resources available. See what we can do for you. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. For too long, corporate tobacco has exploited our people manipulated our practices and profited from our addiction. No more. If you struggle with commercial tobacco addiction, call the American Indian Commercial Tobacco Quit Line today at 1-855-372-0037 and talk to someone who understands. Hey, we're back. Um... Hello, you guys. We're, we're just discussing how we're happy that we have that sports segment. Yes. Because Scott and I don't know anything about sports. But after hearing that, I'm like, oh, wow, that's interesting. Cool. Way to go, Sentinel kids. <laughs> yeah. But you did get beat down by those Glacier. Mm -mm. Wow. Was it a good game? <laughs> it was an awesome game. It was, was it? intense. Yeah. And you guys can watch it anytime on, um, on our channel. Cool. Um, um, M MCAT Television. Yep. Uh, it's online. It's uh, Sentinel Spartans versus uh, Glacier Wolf Pack. Did you? Turn down our audio in the back. Oh, our audio is fine up here, and I can see it bouncing. I think okay, it's just good. our headphones are okay. kind of acting up, so I think we're doing just fine on audio. <laughs> it's just our audio. Oh, right we just here. can't hear a yeah, single thing. Yeah, just can't hear our things. own <laughs> our own darn selves. <laughs> so I'm like, uh oh, yeah, so I, I don't know what's going on with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, whatever. So that's awesome. So it was a good game. It was really close. They went to overtime from what I heard. 61-62, that is close. Especially to play against a team that is undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. Did you end up going to the homecoming game on Saturday? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, How my, was that? My family called kind of like last minute. Um, I was like, oh, okay. But by then I was just like so warped and so done. Because and tired. I, I was like, I, I got to bed by midnight mm -hmm. the night before. And then I had to wake up at 6.30. Yep. And then I was uh, helping Chris set up in the rainy terrible weather yeah uh, by Saturday morning and pretty much I worked uh, like 12 hours within like uh, a 16 hour mm -hmm. or I don't know like maybe like six hour six six seven hour amount of sleep wow so it was pretty intense and then of course Saturday night I would I, I, I don't think I even really took a nap on Saturday at all I laid down for maybe like half an hour but then I was out until about like 2 30 in the morning <laughs> and like it, it was really funny because I was hanging out with uh, my friends Greg and Sarah and um Oh, they locked us in the bar. They were locking down and everything, just trying to prevent people from walking yeah. in. And like, they were totally. <laughs> I, I think, and, and, like, we, the bartenders know us so well that they they, they definitely messed with us by oh, like funny. keeping us locked in. So they just and locked they're just you like, guys like, you're in, never gonna leave. Into the depot. Yeah, because they're it's, that's usually <laughs> safety's the not the guaranteed. Yeah, safety's not guaranteed. So they locked him in there. 
Nice, yeah. I um, just chilled on Saturday. It was nice. I watched movies, talked on the phone. <laughs> it was a great time. <laughs> like, uh, like the Friday video, like, Rebecca Black, like on, on her phone. It's like, this is her on her phone. She's like, yeah. She doesn't some, even like, talk, and like uh, people on the other side of the phone is like, hello. And then some like weird rapper like came up and started laughing. Oh yeah, it was like super and... weird, like a random rapper. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's called. His 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 his, his, uh, his title is Random Rapper. I can't believe that song was popular. No. Friday, Friday. It's like R A N and then D M and then rapper. That's his. That's his. Uh, his, uh, <laughs> random rapper. It probably is, call, yeah. Call sign. It's just like, who's this guy? He just appears in every like, uh, like uh, teens uh, music video <laughs> to bring, to just to give it some street cred. Give it some street cred. Like he's not like that bad, but he's kind of bad. No. So the teens can be kind of bad, but he doesn't mess with guns. Yep. But let's get some good with the bad, and here's some good. You can log on to our website, wickamissoula.wix.com slash wickamissoula. You can find out more information by also logging into our Facebook page. And you can follow us on Twitter at wickamissoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter page. You can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook, and just to find out more information, just go to MCAT.org. Yep. And you have until 5 o'clock today to do uh, the Do It In 72, and it, the... Yeah, we, we, all the elements are online, so you can check it out uh, by logging on to MCAT.org. But, of course, if you're interested in being on our show and um, talking to us uh, about your upcoming rally cause or event, and it has to be nonprofit, it cannot be commercial, mm -hmm. so just uh, give us a heads up on that. Uh, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can also email us, MCAT at MCAT.org, if you're yep. too scared to call. <laughs> but uh, without further ado... Uh, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ram. And for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noah McVoy. Here's ASAP Adonai.